In the cold, gray winter of 1958, a package arrived at the CIA headquarters in Langley, Virginia. The parcel, sent by a British diplomat in Moscow, contained pictures of Boris Pasternak's Dr. Zhivago, a book banned in the USSR. Intelligence officers immediately endeavored to get the book behind the Iron Curtain, knowing it would encourage readers to question their government. A Dutch publishing house in The Hague agreed to print the book, and copies were soon shuttled around Europe, its story and virtues seeping into Soviet society. Throughout history, culture has been a tool of profound power. The European-American cultural relationship is an intertwined history that spans countries and centuries alike. When the Dutch founded New York City, they planted seeds for coming centuries of infatuations with European and American culture that would influence world history. Founding father and President Thomas Jefferson relied on Roman architecture to design Richmond, the capital of Virginia. Pierre L'Enfant, a Parisian by birth, planned the U.S. capital, creating the grid that still underpins urban Washington. Not only did Europeans influence opera houses, museums, and other crown jewels of a budding American identity, but they also guided American postmodern philosophy, avant-garde literature, and film, helping shape the very notion of what it means to be free. As Americans and Europeans considered their identities and futures in the wreckage of World War II, they chose to build off of each other. Thus evolved a cultural relationship in tandem with complex foreign policy choices. In 1961, JFK met with Charles de Gaulle, but the talks didn't go well. Jackie Kennedy, fluent in French, stepped in to win over French culture minister Moreau. A year later, Jackie convinced Moreau to loan the Mona Lisa to the US. In 1962, French citizens rioted in the streets of Paris, not for pension protections or political change, but over anger the Mona Lisa was embarking on a journey to the U.S., across the wintry waters of the Atlantic. This was the second time in history that she had left French soil. 500,000 people saw the painting in D.C.'s National Gallery, and over a million visitors saw it at the Mets in New York. This exhibition increased American interest in European art and reaffirmed French-American solidarity. Jackie had accomplished one of the most impressive feats of cultural diplomacy in modern history. Throughout the Cold War, as international spies scurried around the world looking for how to build and break empires, the CIA undertook a massive effort to sell American culture abroad. It financed jazz concerts in West Germany, while Louis Armstrong booed a Prague audience in 1965. Despite the conservative congressman's claim that all modern art is communistic, the CIA used artists like Jackson Pollock and his canvases to promote freedom of expression and Americanism abroad. The ferocious splatters of his paintings stood in stark contrast to Soviet apartment blocks and socialist realism. In 1989, as the USSR limped towards collapse, a group of eccentric rock stars landed in Moscow. They donned American flags, leather jackets, and long shaggy locks, unsure of how welcome they really were. The group headed to Central Lenin Stadium, which was packed. The Moscow Music Peace Festival, later likened to Russia's Woodstock, featured bands like Bon Jovi and Motley Crue. The CIA is even rumored to have written Wind of Change by the Scorpions, a ballad that encapsulated and encouraged peaceful demands for a better future. Loud guitar riffs emanated from Lenin Stadium, announcing yet another step in the steady unraveling of the USSR. The CIA's exhaustive efforts in Europe celebrated the richness of Western culture, while taunting the tides of totalitarianism. Throughout the 20th century, operatives targeted avant-garde writers and artists, underscoring the American recognition that soft power was an ally of immeasurable importance. Decades later, the fall of the Berlin Wall symbolized the collapse of the Soviet Union, and with it, the growing sphere of American influence and the opportunity for a more unified Europe. Today, roughly 75% of Americans trace their ancestry to Europe, from German wine country in Texas to French Cajun cuisine in Louisiana. It's impossible to separate American culture from European. 
5 million Europeans live in the US, and nearly a million Americans live in Europe. Critics of abstract expressionism have sometimes viewed the works of artists like Jackson Pollock or Cy Twombly as messy and frivolous. In today's constant news cycle, it's easy to see art as a non-essential luxury. But, as the old adage goes, the pen is mightier than the sword. The 20th century demonstrate that paintbrushes, 35mm film, cassette tapes and rock stars play central roles in the transatlantic relationship, starring in spy schemes and our collective consciousness. From a shrewd smile hanging in the mitt, to the smuggling of Dr. Zhivago, culture captures the very essence of international friendship. The 20th century clandestine amplification of Western culture shows that government too views art and culture as a tool of incalculable power, even mightier than the threat of nuclear war. Culture carries the ideals of democracy. Whether in Minsk or Missouri, we should all pause for a moment to thank the arts, present, past and future, for serving as diplomats during turmoil and as friends during peace. <laughs>